Hey everybody, this is Jen. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be discussing where I sleep and why. So grab yourself a nice warm beverage and a comfy chair and sit down and let's have a nice little talk today right here on Garden Jen's Journey. Okay, so the thumbnail asks the question, where do I sleep? Do I sleep on my bed or do I sleep in my recliner? The answer is both and neither. <laughs> it depends on the day. So if you guys have been following me for any length of time, you know I struggle with some uh, health issues and those health issues can be quite debilitating at times. Uh, the health issue I struggle with the most is fibromyalgia. And uh, for those who don't know what fibromyalgia is, I'll give you the cliff note version. Fibromyalgia is uh, chronic pain throughout your body that's caused by chronic inflammation. And usually if you're diagnosed with fibromyalgia, it's because they cannot find any other reason why, why you have this chronic inflammation and chronic pain. So now you're diagnosed with fibromyalgia, which can be a blanket uh, disorder, as some may say, because uh, it encompasses so many different things. So I have fibromyalgia plus a couple other uh, chronic problems, but the Fibro causes the bulk of my issues in day to day living, and that includes where I can sleep. Um, laying in my bed, laying flat, um, is very painful, very uncomfortable, and I really can't get uh, in a good position to be able to sleep. So, generally, I sleep in re my recliner because I can have that. Uh, just adjustment of the angle of my legs and of my back where I can actually get some sort of sleep. Sometimes though um, my restless leg syndrome or my fibro is so intense that neither sleeping on my bed or in my chair uh, can I get comfortable enough to try to get some rest. And with fibro as well as many other chronic illnesses, if you're not getting rest, you're not, your body's not able to do the rejuvenation, renewal, and, and try to heal itself because it's not getting that downtime. And so your, your condition gets worse. It doesn't get any better because you're not getting any sleep. So that's the lowdown as far as the uh, Question of the day, the thumbnail question of the day, where do I sleep? So I recently went to the doctors and got a checkup done because I've been dealing with some problems that are getting quite problematic. Um, if you've listened to my videos and you're quite in tune with different noises, you've noticed that I have a breathing problem. I breathe quite heavy and I sound out of breath a lot and things like that and a lot of it's due to me being overweight um, I'm actually classified as morbidly obese right now and so breathing hard is just part and parcel to carrying all this weight around but lately it's got worse a lot worse um, just walking from my chair to the restroom or from uh, the parking lot inside to the store, I get really winded, really worn out, really quick. Um, it's not like an asthmatic that uh, I'm wheezing and stuff yet. It's, it's not that yet. I just get really winded, really tired. It's like I've been running a marathon, and that's just walking 100 feet or so, and not even that sometimes. So I've been dealing with that um, 
in a lot of uh, fibro fog lately. It's been getting really bad. Um, my short-term memory and my recall really, really sucks. <laughs> There's no really other way to put it right now is that it then it sucks. Um, I think my husband told the doctor yesterday that basically my ability to recall uh, things is about maybe an hour um, tops when it comes to uh, remembering what was said earlier in the day and being able to recall it later on. Uh, conversations we'd had, uh, things I might have said, uh, you know, to somebody. Um, I'll completely forget that I said it or that we had this conversation within about an hour. And uh, so it's really difficult. Uh, we get into a lot of fights here because I don't remember certain conversations or the way that I remember them isn't the way that other people remember them. And so it starts a lot of fights. Um, and it's very, very hard to deal with all the drama that comes with um, short-term memory problems um, and things of that nature. Um, and it's uh, also quite embarrassing, I guess, if you want to say. Um, you know, not only can I not walk very far anymore at this point in time because I get so worn out, but now I can't remember things where the hill of beans and um, just trying to function as a 43-year-old with no memory capabilities at the moment is very, very stressful. Um, very, very stressful. So that's where I'm currently at. Uh, I went to the doctors to try to figure this all out and uh, see if there's some things going on that we needed to look into. Uh, had them do blood work to see if I'm dealing with some uh, nutrient deficiencies uh, that might be contributing to my memory problems um, and my breathing problems and my hair. <laughs> My hair is getting to the point where it's quite brittle um, and it's falling out. So I'm dealing with that as well. That there's some things going on in within my body that um, is not good. It's kind of like my body's fighting against itself right now. Kind of like an autoimmune uh, disorder going on. But uh, he didn't want to do the blood work for all those micronutrients. He figured I can just start taking a multivitamin and that will even anything out as far as that. Except for vitamin D. Uh, here in the north, uh, people suffer a lot from vitamin D deficiency just because we don't get enough of that direct sunlight to be able to absorb the vitamin D, especially in the winter time. And my vitamin D is quite quite low um, so I have to start taking those supplements again and try to get that up um, but other than that he had checked um, I'd gone over to the hospital to get the uh, blood work done he had also ordered a chest x-ray uh, to figure out something's wrong with, wrong with my lungs since it's hard for me to breathe and um, that all checked out fine and then while I was over there he decided we're gonna order a uh, EKG as well so he ordered one of those and uh, so waiting for all those test results to come back and uh, just got my test results for the EKG and it's a little concerning um, they found something which I guess is a good thing, you know, that there's something there that validates that my body is not functioning quite well. <laughs> but uh, they found something there, and I have to go in for further testing so they can kind of pinpoint what's going on. So I'm a little stressed out about it, um, a little. <laughs> um, try not to think about it, but... 
when you've been dealing with chronic health conditions for so long, sometimes it's just like, eh, it's just another, uh, just another thing to add to my list, you know? Um, and I know I need to get this weight off, and that's something else I want to talk to you guys about, is, uh, I've been really, really struggling trying to get this weight off. Um, once I start exercising or start putting forth the effort to try to get this weight off, something always happens. And uh, this is one of those times again. Um, I started going to the gym, you know, and started trying to exercise more and things like that. And um, now I'm having these uh, breathing problems and um, problems potentially with my heart that could sideline any exercise program. And um, that's very disheartening. Um, you know, I'm morbidly obese you know the the amount of weight that I'm carrying can potentially kill me and I can't get it off because I have these other issues that could potentially kill me and um, so that's where my struggle is right now is just trying to figure out how am I going to lose this weight that I know I need to lose when my body refuses to let me lose it so to speak if you know what I'm saying and um so right now uh <clears throat> excuse me sorry about that right now from what it stands um i had lost around 15 pounds or so when i started the crazy potato diet and if you don't know what i'm talking about i'll put a link up above for the crazy potato diet when i started that i had lost 15 pounds and um I was doing really well as far as uh, starting to stabilize some things and uh, we we're on the right track. Then I uh, slowly moved over to a whole food plant-based diet and um, after that uh, started adding in some more whole grains and some other other carbs like that and I thought everything was going okay you know I was feeling alright and um, then noticed I uh, started having problems with with the breathing and things like that and um, my clothes weren't fitting right anymore and not talking that they were too loose now they're getting too tight and so I knew I was gaining weight and that was not cool um, I tried taking my weight here at home but my scales batteries went out and we haven't been able to get some new batteries because they're the circle kind instead of just the regular triple A's and stuff like that so I was like great you know what can I do and um, so I did take my weight when I was over at the gym and it was up a little bit I'm like okay you know that's all right your weight fluctuates when I went to the doctors the other day uh, they took my weight and um, I had gained quite a bit actually um, not only did I gain back what I had originally lost when I started the crazy potato diet, but I gained basically another 15 pounds on top of that. So I gained basically 30 pounds. Um, and that was devastating to, to see, to hear that, um, you know, I'm trying to lose weight and now I'm gaining weight and other health problems. So, um, we're going to be trying something new. Um, right now, exercise is on uh, hold until we figure out what's going on with my heart. We don't want to strain it too much until we know what's going on, and then we'll go from there. But um, I'm going to be switching things up with my diet. Um, just thinking back about you know when maybe I started having these more severe health problems and things and started really noticing the weight gain um, in attributing it to the fact that maybe it's because I've increased how much uh, whole grains I've been consuming uh, as far as especially whole grain bread I've uh, been eating a lot of bread products pasta products and things um, and so we're going to do something a little radical that I really didn't want to do, but right now it's like, what do, what else do I have to lose? You know, um, I've tried different diets and they've worked, 
but then um, after a while they quit working so to speak and so I'm not really finding that exact piece of what it is that that uh, is creating these struggles in my system so we're going to be going gluten free yep I said it we're going gluten free and uh, I'm not really excited about that um, you know uh, God gave us all these grains and and bread and stuff as a uh, way to survive as a staple and unfortunately because of the result of of sin on this world our food supply has become where it's detrimental to our health and things that used to be a staple that used to feed people who are in famine bread whole grains um, you know your rice and things like that um, now are potentially a huge health risk um, so that's that's where I'm going um, starting tomorrow which is March 1st I'm not sure how soon this will get uploaded but starting March 1st I'm going to be starting my uh, gluten free diet and uh, just taking some notes and seeing if maybe it is the the glutens and uh, things like that that are really upsetting my system and that my body's not able to uh, digest these uh, proteins anymore and uh, be kind of sad if that's the way it is but like I said because of sin in this world um, things aren't what they used to be and foods not as healthy as it used to be so that's where I'm at um, going gluten free trying to see if that helps with my symptoms trying to see if that helps me lose weight I know that removing oil from my diet, extra oil, has really helped with the fibro and the restless legs syndrome, but it's not 100% yet. There's still other things that cause inflammation that I have to uh, remove from my diet, but we're going to do one thing at a time, one thing at a time. Actually, I'm working on two things at a time, but for me, it, it counts as one. I'm, I'm going to be reducing the amount of sugar intake as well. I usually don't do a lot of sugar anyways, but I'm just going to really be monitoring when I label read uh, to make sure that there's not extra sugar in my products and really going to be dropping those numbers down as well. So when you're dealing with a chronic health issue and you're thinking about dietary change, that's one of the things you have to get really good at is label reading because the manufacturers are very very good at hiding the very bad stuff in your labels and if you're not paying attention you won't notice one of the dirtiest tricks that uh, they try to do is with corn syrup um, corn syrup's not good for you um, if you think about corn it is sweet but it takes a lot of corn processed in a unique way to extract all that corn syrup and even then they monkey with it to try to make it even sweeter and so um, there's a lot of problems with corn syrup and so a lot of people were uh, fighting the high fructose corn syrup as it was noted as and so eventually manufacturers quit calling it high fructose corn syrup and now you'll just see it as fructose corn syrup or simply corn syrup but it's still the same thing they've just changed some words to try to trick you into thinking that uh, this deadly poisonous sugar substitute thing is fine so label reading is very very important when you're dealing with chronic health conditions kind of like I'm dealing with and uh, hoping that you know you can get better I know for people who are allergic to soy for people who are trying to go gluten free and there's another one I can't remember um, that you really have to watch out for and so label reading is very very important because the food manufacturers are getting very very good at hiding those allergens in their foods 
So grab yourself a couple boxes, learn to label read, and learn to be able to decipher the trickery of the food industry so you can make informed choices to better your health. So I hope that you can learn a little bit from, from me that, you know, health, my health journey is a struggle. It really is a struggle. And right now we're going up a steep mountain and it's very tiring. Um, and it's very scary uh, to try to uh, make this, this journey at the moment. But um, I know that the Lord is with me and he will guide my footsteps. And I just have to trust that no matter what happens, that um, I'll get through this one way or another. Um, and to be able to share my journey with others, to let you guys know that you're not alone in your health struggles is very important to me. Um, I don't just put these videos out for, you know, woe is me, um, you know, my life sucks kind of thing. But um, as a way to let others out there know that you're not alone, you know. Maybe you too are sidelined to your recliner for a whole day or so because you can barely move. Maybe you too struggle with just doing basic chores like washing the dishes or cleaning a counter or something like that. Um, and so I just want to let you know that you're not alone, that, you know, there's, there's other people out there who struggle, struggle a lot with their health and try to figure out what's going on and how do I fix this? Can I be fixed? Um, you know, I didn't put on all this weight overnight and, um, it's not going to come off overnight. Um, but there's got to be a way. Uh, there's got to be a way that I can get this weight back off um, that doesn't throw my body into a tizzy. And uh, so once we figure out what's going on with my heart, we'll uh, go on from there with exercises. But we're going to start out with diet first because that doesn't cause my heart to race unless I really start thinking about it and getting myself all upset about the things I can't have. But um, we're going to start with diet. Diet's the easiest thing to, to change at this point in time. And so, here's, all, here's to going gluten-free. We'll see how it goes. I thank you for watching this video with me, for joining me on my journey today. I hope that you found it useful, that uh, you found it maybe encouraging, or giving you some insight on where to go with your current health struggles. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. That way you can stay updated on this part of my journey as well as the other gardening things and health things and all sorts of stuff I do on this channel. I would like you to be a part of it with me. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I just want to thank you so much and say that wherever you are, I hope that you're wonderfully blessed. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.